Today on BRS TV investigates how well will a nearly one foot by one foot diffused panel of LEDs effectively cover a two foot by two foot area? How about two over a two foot by four foot area? Using the Philips Coral Care Gen 2 LED, we're answering that question with some data, but more importantly, we're gonna give you the settings that we recommend to get the most out of this large panel of light. Hi, I'm Randy with this Friday's BRS TV Investigates, where we experiment on our own tanks so you don't have to experiment on yours. And today we find out if Philips, who's been manufacturing lighting solutions for well over 100 years, can use the vast knowledge they've gained and apply that to reef tank lighting with the Philips Coral Care Gen 2, which they've specifically designed to provide the most natural reef appearance possible, both for our coral's energy needs and as close to natural light patterns as you would see in the ocean. I can tell you right now that Philips' choice of a passive cooling approach, which makes for an absolutely dead silent fixture with minimal to nearly no maintenance for moving parts and super simple two color channel control already has it winning me over as a solid reef lighting contender. But the real question today will be if the roughly 11 inch by 12 inch panel of 68 LEDs can meet our goals for spread, spectrum, and par to create stunning tanks like these. That journey begins with our test that will determine the Gen 2 Coral Care spread and how well the panel of LEDs with diffusion plate distributes the PAR output within our 24 inch by 24 inch testing area. And then we apply that data to our two foot by four foot 120 gallon tank to help give you a better idea of how many Coral Care LEDs you should consider for your tank, how high to mount them for the best spread performance possible, and how we would recommend spacing more than one fixture to provide the widest coverage possible. The first aspect to spread that we look at is to determine the Coral Care's optimal mounting height, meaning how high off the top of the water can we mount the light that finds a balance between maintaining the most amount of light inside a 24 square inch testing area, reduces any warm spots directly under the light, and spreads the most amount of par evenly from the center to the outer edges. We started with the Coral Care suspended at six inches above the water line with both blue and white channels set to 100%, which provides the maximum output possible then tested our standard 36 grid of par points just six inches deep in the tank where we found a center average of 754 and an outer ring of 298 for a total average across the top of the tank of 417. With our goal in mind to reduce that hot spot center and more evenly distribute the par over the entire 24 by 24 inches, we continue to raise the Coral Care off the water inch by inch until we stop the test with it mounted at nine inches. Here, instead of a 60% difference between the center and outer par averages that we saw in the beginning, we've now smoothed out the par distribution to 503 in the center and 296 in the outer ring, or now a more evenly distributed 41% difference between the two. That 41% difference, not the best LED we've tested, but nearly identical distribution to the eight bulb T5, making it one of the better options and also making a nine inch mounting height our recommendation for how high we would use the Philips Coral Care over our own tanks. Now that we know our optimal mounting height, to wrap up today's spread discussion, we take a quick look at how many Coral Cares we recommend and how to space them to cover the most area as evenly as possible. Given the roughly 18 inch by 16 inch size of the single Coral Care, logically we can only mount one over our 24 by 24 inch cube and two over our 120 gallon two foot by four foot tank, keeping in mind that they are much heavier than your average lighting option and it's worth the extra thought to mounting them securely. Effectively spacing multiple Coral Cares are also pretty easy because of their larger size and actually by centering two of them evenly over our 48 inch tank and using our recommended color and spectrum settings I'm about to share with you next, we tested an amazing 96% even coverage from the 208 center to just 200 par in the outer edges, 12 inches deep in the tank, which is by far the most even distribution we've ever tested for more than one fixture. Up next, we take a look at the Philips Coral Care Spectrum offering and adjust the available spectrum in a way that makes the tank look awesome, but more importantly, where we believe it best provides the light energy our corals need for both growth and coloration. We then take that BRS recommended spectrum mix and compare it to one of the most historically successful spectrum blends we've seen in the hobby, being the ATI Blue Plus T5 bulb. And lastly for spectrum testing, before we share the Coral Care PAR data and recommended settings, 
we see how the glass diffusing plate transforms each of the 68 LEDs into one cohesive spectrum blend inside our tanks in our dynamic spectrum blending test. First, let's see what spectrum options are available from the Philips LED, and out of the 68 total LEDs, at least 44 of them fall within 400 to 500 nanometers, which is typically the range we target for creating a wide blue spectrum band. However, unique to the Coral Care is how they are controlled to achieve a more blue tank or a more white one. That control is extremely simple, with only two sliders needed to make adjustments. One is the overall intensity, while the other balances how much blue or how much white you desire in your tank. With the color temperature slider directly in the center, both blue and white channels are being driven at 100%, and if you slide to the left, the output of the blue channel goes down, giving you a more white look, while conversely sliding it to the right lowers the white channel output, providing you with a bluer look. Basically, all you need to do is change the slider to where your tank looks the best to you and adjust the overall intensity to meet your PAR goals. It doesn't get much simpler than that. With the light suspended over one of our office tanks, we adjusted the color slider until the tank looked good to our eyes, which we found at a 30% white and 100% blue with the intensity at 100%. And when we compared that spectrum produced by the historical gold standard ATIT5 Blue Plus bulb, we see that it tracks pretty well from 400 up to the Coral Care's peak at 445. And although it doesn't have as much of the ratio as ATI between 420 to 460, it still hits quite a bit of that entire range in that wide blue 400 to 500 that we set out to achieve. Up next is our dynamic spectrum testing where we take 10 spectrum measurements under our 60 gallon test tank filled with water while we watch for subtle shifts or changes in the spectrum with the Coral Care set to 100% for both blue and white channels. As we cycle through each of the 10 spectrum shots, Barring a subtle shift near 470 and some fluctuations in the green, yellow, and red ranges, I would say that the blending performance is right up there with the similar sized LED panels we've tested before, yet looking at the shimmer inside the tank, there's very little color separation visible to our eyes. As we've seen so far, the Philips Coral Care is not only easy to size properly for most common sized tanks, but with only two controls to dial in the spectrum and intensity, it's also one of the easiest lights to set up and run that we've had in our testing lab. And now it's time to fine tune those settings to help provide you with a starting point for how to set one of these up over your own tank and get a better understanding of where the Coral Care performs best. The settings I'm about to share are a culmination of what we found for our BRS recommended mounting height of nine inches, spacing recommendations for using two Philips LEDs over a tank like our four foot by two foot, and spectrum settings for a balance between a great looking tank and our corals needs. Using that information, all we need to do now is simply adjust the overall intensity in the Coral Care app until we reach our PAR goals for two of the most common tank types out there. Either a lower light demand tank like this one filled with LPS, Zoas, or soft corals that typically thrive in PAR ranges between 75 to 150 throughout the tank, or a tank like this that's jam-packed from side to side and top to bottom with higher PAR demand SPS corals within 200 to 350 PAR. I will say right up front, if you like a bluer look to your tank or a balance between blue and white like the spectrum that we recommend and tested, there will be a significant trade-off for PAR output by lowering the white channels by 70% to achieve those blue colors. As we're about to see in both the 60 gallon and 120 gallon test tanks, using our recommended settings, there's plenty of PAR output for a tank full of lower light demand corals, yet under for our goal for SPS dominated systems. That's not to say that you couldn't hit those higher PAR numbers if if you chose to run your tank a little more on the wider side to achieve higher par. With that, we tested a single Coral Care mounted at our recommended nine inches above the 24 by 24 inch testing area with the color set to 100% blue and 30% white. Then we turned down the overall intensity to 70% with the goal of filling the entire tank from top to bottom with par ranging between 75 to 150. And in doing so, we found a stellar performance of 85% of the tank or 92 out of 108 points within those par ranges. 85% of points at six, 12 and 18 inches deep in the tank being right up there with some of the best performances that we've tested, even beating out the gold standard eight bulb T5. To give you a better idea of how the Coral Care performed with our BRS recommended settings set to a max overall intensity of 100%, using our SPS dominated goals of filling the tank between 200 to 350, 
You can see here by the three heat maps that our 100% blue and 30% white Spectrum Choice provides less par overall throughout the top, middle, and bottom of the tank, where we were only able to achieve 43% of points in that SPS zone. As such, I would actually recommend this as a very good option for mixed tanks where you place more of your higher par demand SPS corals near the top of the tank. However, if you desire a pretty overtly white look in your tank, you can increase the white channel and very likely hit higher par numbers. As for using two Philips Coral Care LEDs over our 120 gallon tank, twice the size of our 60 gallon, again we mounted them both at the recommended 9 inches above the water, set them to our 100% blue, 30% white, and adjusted the overall intensity to target that 75 to 150 range. With the overall intensity set to 60%, we actually found a nearly identical performance as the 60 gallon tank with 86% or 171 out of 198 PAR data points in the top, middle, and bottom in that PAR sweet spot for LPS softies and polyps. We then cranked up the intensity of our recommended spectrum to 100%, searching for those SPS dominated PAR numbers between 200 to 350. And again, we saw a nearly equal output to the 60 gallon test tank, this time with 55% of the entire tank reaching those SPS dominated ranges, making for a very good option again for mixed tanks with strategically placed SPS and likely higher if more of the white channel is being utilized. I actually think that this is the Philips Coral Care speaks to in that for you mixed tanks lovers or those who like a more natural ocean-like appearance inside your tank, this is definitely an option to get you there. I also can't say enough about how dead silent the Coral Care is since there's zero mechanical noise from cooling fans, which is also pretty desirable when you consider maintenance down the road, especially if they're mounted in difficult to access hoods, ceilings, or in-wall fish rooms. There's something nice about knowing that once it's installed, I likely won't have to touch them again. If that type of ultra low maintenance approach to reefing speaks to you like it does to me, Ryan shares tips and tricks to building a nearly self-sufficient ULM tank in this video about lessons we learned from trying it ourselves and he's got the secret sauce that you need so check it out right here.